Thank you. Um, many of these songs, as I was writing them, I was using as a reference um, a uh, folk artist named Royal Robertson, who was an African American sign painter from Baldwin, Louisiana. And he was also, a, a, outside of being an artist and a sign painter, he was an eccentric and a scholar and a minister and a self proclaimed prophet. And, um, he um, had a really big family of 12 children and a beautiful wife named, named Adele. And uh, he um, was the local uh, sign painter and he would do murals for some of the local businesses and he's, he painted some of the local police cars and things like the ice cream truck and the clubs. Uh, but in his free time, he did paintings for his wife and he uh, drew depictions from dreams and visions that he had when he would have out-of-body experiences because he was, um, had these sort of mystical powers and he called himself um, patriarchal, prophet, saint, um, uh, royal Robertson. He had all these kind of names for himself and he wore this, this like beautiful, um, colorful kind of beanie cap and he dressed in these funny robes and. Um, and he built all these sort of wood cutouts with angels and demons and planets and space, spacecrafts. And um, he decorated his house with them. Um, and he also w was visited by aliens and UFOs. And, and then he would write stories about the visitations and he would draw pictures about them. And then he, he would have visions of the end of the world the apocalypse and he would draw these sort of pastoral landscapes with like hurricanes and all kinds of uh, uh, spacecraft and explosions and nuclear holocaust and all kinds of wonderful things blowing up all over the place um, and as he got older it became clear to his wife Adele that he actually had mental illness and uh, he, was, he had schizophrenia and, and she, she, she believes even to, because Adele is still alive, uh, Royal died in 97, but she believes to this day that Royal had special powers, but that somehow because of his work and because of, of his um, um, obsession with the occult and with myth, mythology and astrology and outer space that he kind of entered into a creative madness. And for the last two years of their marriage, he um, uh, was sort of on a, uh, consistent rampage against the, the CIA and the FBI and the government and he believed that um, that um, you know that uh, the, that the um, Italian mob were out to get him and that he had been abducted by aliens and that he had all these special secrets and he didn't want to have to divulge them and he felt like he was being tortured and eventually he started to believe that some of his children weren't his own and were bastard children and then he um, went so crazy at one point he, uh, he thought that his wife Adele was cheating on him and she, he began calling her a prostitute and so um, he kicked her out and the 12 kids he kicked out and he spent the last few decades of his life alone in his house and he um, isolated himself and built up this sort, of, this sort of obstacle of his heart in his yard and then created within his home all these shrines to different creatures mythological creatures that he had created and he drew um, designs for automobiles and tried to sell them to the government, tried to sell patents of like the spacecraft and hovercraft and boats and um, he pretty much isolated himself from everybody, his friends and family because of his mental illness and it was only a very few art collectors who befriended him and um, helped him out, gave him some money, uh, bought him art supplies and tried to make sure that that he was okay and um, um, and one of these uh, art collectors and artists was a friend of mine named Scott from New York City and I met him just a few years ago and he um, showed me some of Royal's work and um, and I was really inspired and moved by it and as I was working out a lot of this new material I found in Royal kind of a bizarre 
uh, companion to uh, to a lot of the work that I had been that I've been that I've been doing because I had decided that I wasn't going to be writing songs based on uh, sort of formats, song formats, or formulas, or conventional kind of narrative structures. And I just wanted to write music based on impulse and feeling and sensation and, uh, and sound. And I found that Royal's work was really inspiring because uh, in spite of his illness, in spite of his madness, in spite of the absurdity and the kind of the vengeance behind a lot of it um, toward the world and toward his wife, there was a kind of freedom of sensation and expression that was really exciting to me. And, and uh, even though it was offensive, I found it really beautiful. Um, and so his, his work was kind of a, a reference point or inspiration for a lot of this. And because I felt like as I was working, that I was venturing away from everything that was familiar and comfortable. And I felt that I had kind of isolated myself in my own kind of whatever psychological madness, you know, as cliche as it sounds, and it felt kind of almost physically and mentally ill for a long time and found in Royal a kind of relief. And because in spite of his illness, in spite of his madness, he created such beautiful work. Um, and so his work um, accompanies the album The Age of Odds and also it's featured tonight in some of the projections. Um, and this is a song that I wrote sort of for Royal, about Royal, sort of with Royal Robertson in mind. And it's a reality check. It's called Get Real, Get Right. 